Baba Jobs is the first toy introduced in Poppy Playtime Chapter 4, though it won't be the primary antagonist in this game. It has been teased as another terrifying toy, but in a surprising twist, Mob Games has intentionally crafted the design of an entirely new toy for the incredibly frightening Poppy Playtime series. According to the backstory, this company has the power to simply pay and create anything they desire, regardless of how questionable or corrupt it may be. If you've ever wondered how this playtime company managed to construct an enormous headquarters with numerous hidden underground operations, the answer lies in the assistance of the Warb Construction Company. We previously discovered a bribery letter from S.D. Rittman, the head of the research department at the playtime company, addressed to the Warren B. Construction Company. This letter outlined that the development of the playtime factory had to be kept under strict secrecy, with only top-tier employees from both companies being privy to the details of the project. This was done to ensure the construction company would keep the playtime company's secrets confidential. The bribe amounts to $100,000, which is over 2 billion dong, folks. The company wants its underground laboratory to be completed within 12 months. Of course, this isn't the top construction company in the market. But the reason Playtime Company chose them is that it's a small family-run business. The smaller the company, the fewer people are aware of the secrets Playtime Company is hiding. So when they were offered a few billion dollars and the chance to work with a smaller company, they didn't hesitate to accept without asking questions. Essentially, the leaflet only contained basic information, but someone had distributed it. It turns out that if you shine ultraviolet light on the paper, certain characters marked with invisible ink become visible. Each letter sent on the paper has different characters marked, and when all the characters are matched and pieced together, they reveal a link to the website centraldomainacc.net. This is the first step in accessing the LCK ARG game, which takes you to an old computer screen. However, when you enter any information, the machine simply returns a line denying access. Fortunately, a mysterious Discord account called Playtime Call provided a clue for gamers. To proceed, you must type in the command line STTEEPXCHB, which will unlock the guide. This allows you to access the system, where there are numerous things to explore, including a series of newly revealed photos related to Chapter 4. Also included is the first male critter, an advertisement for Playtime Company's Child Prodigy Search for Super Talent program. The program calls for smart children to participate offering the chance to join Director Ludwig and explore the unsolved mysteries of the universe, promising learning, fun, and more if you just take the entrance test. If you meet the requirements, Playtime Company will reach out to you. Do you remember that? Until now, the company only used the children of the Koi season for their experiments. However, now they are looking for other highly intelligent children, as it seems that the living toys created from orphans didn't meet the company's standards. They needed more gifted children to create the perfect living toys. This is why Playtime Company initiated the Prodigy Search program and also started experiments to create living toys with the help of these selected intelligent children. However, the number of participants was too small to conduct experiments on such a large scale, so the company turned to orphans to continue researching how to develop these living toys. The second photo reveals a letter that the company would send to children selected for the Prodigy program. Dear Examinee, my name is Elliot Ludwig, and I am writing to you today with some very important news. You have registered and completed the aptitude test, and I have been eagerly awaiting the results. I am thrilled and honored to inform you that you have been selected for the Prodigy program. I hope that, alongside the other chosen children, you will be able to accomplish things that others could only dream of. This journey will be extraordinary, and I trust that you will feel excitement as we move forward. When minds as brilliant as yours come together, incredible things will occur. Detailed instructions regarding your accommodation and the personal items you should bring will follow shortly. For now, you can rest easy knowing that the future you've always envisioned is nearly within reach. I truly value Elliot Ludwig's statement. The part of the letter that catches my attention the most is the mention of the detailed instructions on where to stay, as well as what personal items to bring, which will be sent to the children selected to join the Prodigy program. I can't return to my kindergarten, so where exactly are these children located? Perhaps this is where we will be placed in Poppy Playtime Chapter 4. This facility is located on the deepest floor of the Playtime factory, right next to the lab where the brutal and twisted experiments are being conducted. The next photo shows a list of scientists working for Playtime Company. They come from various fields, and one name stands out, circled in red. Dr. High Sawyer. Later. 
He was also the one who proposed the Bigger Views project, which led to the creation of Living Toys. The person behind all the crimes was the original Playtime Company, with the goal of transforming the company's employees into giant monsters, ensuring they would serve the company forever without complaint. He believed his actions would save the company, and no one could stop him. According to this brief note, the list above was compiled by the Lock Card Inspector, who also investigated the accident involving the boy Theodore Grambo. This incident, which involved the boy and Experiment 1006, nearly resulted in his escape from playtime daycare. The inspector is now tracking down those involved in the company's dark experiments. Though information about these individuals is extremely limited, Than Che Lockhart has managed to gather everything he could, including a list of the stakeholders. The next photo shows a letter that seems to come from a playtime employee involved in the Bigger Bodies project. They are voicing their concerns about the safety of the staff participating in this project, as many people have already died. Yet Playtime Company and Dr. Sawyer remain indifferent. Everything is so bleak that at any moment, a tragedy could occur, taking the lives of everyone involved. The letter references an accident that had just happened, and if Dr. Sawyer found out, he would be furious. It seems the accident they were referring to involved the boy Zero Grumble, but it could also be another incident. I'm just guessing randomly here. The next photo is a close-up of an eye. I'm not sure whose it belongs to, but this individual likely has something to do with the last insect of Chapter 4, or Experiment 1006. It's difficult to draw many conclusions from this eye-only image, similar to the spectral photos we've seen, where it's hard to make guesses about what they capture. We also have a video from a security camera. Though there's no image, the recorded sound is horrifying. The cracking noise is the sound of a rib breaking, almost like some creature is shifting its body. Now, let's move to the most exciting revelation from the Poppy Playtime ARG this time, the image of a new toy. This is not a deer critter, but a toy we've never encountered before, even though the game's ARG intentionally obscured many photos to keep it unclear. Mob Games still hasn't officially announced this monster, but a genius on the internet figured out how to reverse the photo and restore it to its original, undisturbed state. This revealed the appearance of a bizarre creature, a dinosaur mixed with piano key details. Its teeth are made from piano keys, extending down to its abdomen and tail. People have begun calling this creature Pianosaurus. If you're wondering whether this monster is real or not, there's a young man who asked in a Discord inbox whether Pianosaurus was the final creature of Chapter 4. He was subsequently banned by the admin for revealing a secret that was too sensitive, so it's probably true. That said, this is just a 2D drawing for now. When it actually appears, the dinosaur will likely look very different, and it may not even be called Pianosaurus anymore. Remember at the beginning of Chapter 3, when Lai's camera passed through a series of paintings made by orphans in the kindergarten? The character in those drawings was Catnap, but one of the pictures stood out as extremely odd. It didn't resemble any creature we've encountered. It seemed more like a butterfly or bird than anything else. At the time of the teaser's release, Catnap hadn't been announced yet, so there were many speculations and theories about the final reveal for Chapter 3. When Catnap was finally revealed, we all thought it resembled the creature in the drawing. Even now, I still find it hard to believe this was intended to be a cat. Even if it was drawn by a child, no child would draw a cat like that today. Take a look at the appearance of the crow and see if you notice any similarities. The crow is also purple, like the creature in the painting. And most importantly, it stands upright on its two legs, which is a bit convincing, don't you think? But that's not all. There seems to be another creature lurking in the passage, a being that is neither a catnap nor a toy. We've seen it hiding in the shadows, clearly following us but it quickly vanishes whenever we catch a glimpse of it. If you take a closer look at the shadow of this creature, you'll realize it's not a cow, it's more akin to a winged being. But if you dive into the description of P's personality, it becomes clear that P prefers to stay in the dark and despises the existence of the sun. In the spring critter animation, before the group is relieved by the arrival of the sand, the toys are terrified by the storm and the sounds of thunder. And what do you think the Pell Crow's badge is? It's a cloud shaped like a lightning bolt. Could it be that what the critters are actually afraid of isn't the storm, but the crow itself? Considering that Luna is the opposite version of the spring critter, it makes sense that they became the villains in the spring critter animation. 
In fact, there was an area cut from Chapter 3 due to time constraints before the game's release, an area meant to be the toy store. In this section, Page P was set to appear, and it's revealed that the cemetery is the crow's favorite place. It enjoys spending its nights there, killing time and listening to music, feeling more at home among the dead than the living. In Chapter 4, Dog Day descends to a location where the corpses of other toys are stacked into a mountain. We've never encountered a character with so many dead toys, so this must be the Playtime Factory's cemetery. From this, we can conclude that all the clues are pointing toward a single character, Fruit Pea.